Hello, my name is Simonaz and welcome to another Simonaz Guide video. Today, I want to talk about my plans to gear up my rogue to be as powerful as I can be for the release of the Phase 1 Raids. You can apply these same strategies as well to make your rogue super strong, super fast. I'll talk about the main sources of upgrades, heroic dungeons, emblems of heroism, reputations, professions, and BOE items that you can buy. Before we get to that, we need to reach level 80, so we better talk about leveling first. For leveling up, I've got a four person group with some of my guildmates and we'll be crushing dungeons Monday evening and hope to hit 80 by the end of Tuesday, maybe get a few heroics in before the day is done. I did not invest a lot of time figuring out hyper optimized leveling strategies and I chose dungeon leveling because one of my guildmates asked me to join their group. I'm not concerned too much about how to reach level 80 super fast. I know I'll play the game a lot and I'll reach level 80 no matter if I dungeon grind, quest, mob grind out in the world or whatever. I also did not prepare any pre-quest turn-ins for my character. Pre-questing involves spending an absurd amount of time and effort prior to Wrath of Lich King launch in order to save a very little bit of time after the Wrath launch. I decided my time pre-launch is just as valuable as my time post-launch, so pre-questing does not appeal to me. Ultimately, I don't think doing some kind of super degenerate, insane level up grind is important. Maybe you get one extra heroic lockout compared to a less optimized route. Take it easy, level up, you'll be fine. Now that the leveling is done with, we can talk about what to do at level 80. The most important thing to do to maximize your player power for the launch of the raids is to run heroic dungeons. First thing after hitting 80, I want to get into heroic dungeons so I can get as many chances at the valuable epic drops that come from them as possible. With a short 10 days between Wrath launch and Raid launch, you are unlikely to get every pre-raid bis dungeon drop available, so it is just about maximizing your odds by giving yourself the most chances. There are a few standout drops from certain dungeons that you want to be sure to run every day if you aren't going to just be running every heroic every day. Gundrak Heroic offers the Gord Hide Leg Guards as well as the Hemorrhaging Circle, best in slot items regardless of your intended specialization. Falls of Stone offers an epic dagger drop, the Flesh Shaper, which is a very desirable item for any assassination rogue, and Calling of Stratholme offers Greed, an epic fist weapon, which is great for any combat rogue or as a weapon swap for Fan of Knives AoE damage as any specialization. There are many other good dungeon drops, but these are the big hitters. Many other slots have close alternatives, and these slots do not. You can check out pre-raid BIS guide videos for more detailed listing of gear items for both combat and assassination rogues, and I've linked those in the video's description. There are a few reputations that are good to level and can offer reliable gear upgrades that don't depend on RNG dungeon drops. Knights of the Ebon Blade offer a strong helm enchant at Revered, Argent Crusade offers great epic boots at Exalted, and Wyrmrest Accord offer an epic bracer at Exalted as well. The Knights faction requires you to do a short quest chain in Ice Crown to unlock their faction Quartermaster, where you access the faction rewards and faction tavern. Wowhead's Knights of the Ebon Blade Reputation Guide has a great walkthrough of the intro quest to unlock Knights of the Ebon Blade, which is linked in the video description. Faction tabards are a new feature in Wrath of the Lich King that makes leveling factions extremely easy. Once you reach friendly status with most Wrath factions by doing just a few quests for them, you'll be able to get a faction tabard from the faction's rewards quartermaster. Wearing this tabard while doing dungeons causes all the enemies you kill to award reputation with the associated faction. If you're doing your normal heroic dungeon grind every day, you can just rotate on these tabards and get your reputations maxed out without too much trouble. I will prioritize reaching Revered with Knights of the Ebon Blade, then Exalted with Argent Crusade, then Exalted with Wyrmrest Accord. There's one more faction that's important, but unfortunately it does not have a faction tabard for easy reputation gains. The Sons of Hodir faction is in the Storm Peak zone and requires a lengthy quest chain to unlock. The desired reward from this faction are powerful shoulder enchants at Exalted status. After the opening quest chain, you'll have access to daily quests and a few other ways to gain reputation with the Sons of Hodir. Again, this isn't a reputation guide video, so I'll leave the details of that to the excellent reputation guide found on Wowhead, which is linked in the video description. Once you're exalted on one of your characters with the Sons of Hodir, you won't need to repeat this grind again, since the exalted level enchants are bind to account and can be shared between your different characters. 
If your main character is going to be an inscriptionist, you can skip this as well because inscriptionists have access to more powerful shoulder enchants through the inscription profession. In Burning Crusade, Heroic Dungeons and Raid Bosses dropped Badge of Justice, and in Wrath, we have a very similar system with Emblem of Heroism and Emblem of Valor. Valor come primarily from raids and give more powerful rewards, but because they come from raids, we aren't concerned with them for pre-raid gearing. You'll accumulate a whole lot of Emblem of Heroism from doing your heroics every day, and these offer another reliable way to acquire gear. In Dalaran, you can turn in Emblem of Heroism for a few very nice pieces. This is the order that I'll try to get them. First, the Mirror of Truth for 40 emblems, then the Gloves of the Lost Vanquisher for 60, the Chess Guard of the Lost Vanquisher for 80, Pendant of the Outcast Hero for 25, and finally, Jorok's Crocolis Skin Belt for 40. This is a pretty steep total number of badges for all these desirable items, a total of 245 badges, which is around 5 days worth of doing every heroic every day. Possible, but maybe not probable for everyone. I choose to prioritize the Jorox Crocolis Skin Belt last, even though it's a very powerful item, because there's a very similar belt I might get from Utgard Keep Heroic. As it is in virtually every version of WoW, gold allows you to increase your player power to some extent. There will be many things you can buy with gold to be stronger. No one knows exactly how much these different things will cost, because that depends on what server you're on, what day it is, and many other factors. I can still advise on what are some priority things to get with a rough idea of relative costs and relative power levels. First up is the Librarian's Paper Cutter. This is a BOE dagger that drops from Heroic Halls of Lightning trash mobs. It is desirable for both combat and assassination rogues and is a very strong item. It is the second best fast weapon for both specializations in all of Phase 1. This is almost certainly going to be a worthwhile purchase. The next best option comes from Kirin Tor Reputation, the Lightblade Rivener Dagger, which is much worse. Next up we have enchants, leg enhancements, and gems, all those kind of item upgrades. They may not be flashy, but enchants and gems offer a considerable amount of player power. I think it's likely to be a very high ratio of power gained to gold spent to get proper enchants and gems on each armor and weapon slot, especially berserking on the weapons. Mongoose is the second best if you're short on gold, and it's definitely worse, but not the end of the world if you're trying to penny pinch. For the professions, engineering offers some fairly unique bonuses like the hyperspeed accelerators, nitro boosts, and explosives. These are unmatched by any of the other professions, and most of them are accessible around only 400-ish skill level, which does not require substantial investment to reach. If you want to skill all the way up to 440 skill, you can craft the epic Weakness Spectralizer's Goggles, which is an exceptional helmet option for any rogue. Best in slot or on par with best in slot depending on your other gear options. Other professions offer other benefits, but would not call it a priority to access them right away. For the consumables, having a food buff, a flask, and a crapload of Potion of Speed accessible is great. The power increase for having an effectively unlimited supply of Potion of Speed and pressing them as often as possible is pretty substantial and likely beats out one-time cost expensive items like the Dark Moon card Greatness. So before you go spending huge sums on Greatness, make sure you've got a hefty supply of Potion of Speed. Finally, we're at the big ticket items, the Band of the Kirin Tor and the Dark Moon card Greatness. These are big ticket items that I only advise going for if you've already done everything else on the purchasing list. The ring is very expensive, and while I can't say for sure how much a Dark Moon card Greatness will cost, it's a fair guess that it will be extremely expensive prior to the first Nax Ramus lockout. These are likely the least efficient power increase compared to gold cost of the various ways you can spend gold to increase your player power. That's it. This is a quick video before the frenzy of the Wrath of Lich King launch. The TLDR is to get those heroic dungeons in as much as possible. They give you gear drops, emblems, and reputation. I hope this video helps you to sort out what the heck to do with so many different things available in Wrath of Lich King. Have fun, and I'll see you in Northrend. Thanks for watching The Simonized Show. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Can't wait for more sweet videos? Links are on screen that you can watch right now. Be sure to join the Discord server and pop by on Twitch to catch me live. Links to both are in the video description. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.